This video will show you how to use truth tables to test the validity of simple propositional arguments. Here's the five basic logical connectives in propositional logic, the conjunction, disjunction, conditional, biconditional, and negation. These were introduced in an earlier video. I've also introduced truth tables for the five basic connectives. The more familiar you are with these tables, the easier it will be to move forward in propositional logic. In the case of the conjunction, we know that the only condition in which a conjunction is true is when both statements are true. All other combinations of truth values are false. If either or both statements in a disjunction are true, the disjunction as a whole is true. The only time it is false is when both statements are false. The conditional is only false if the first statement, called the antecedent, is true and the second statement, called the consequent, is false. The biconditional is true only if both statements have the same truth value. Finally, the negation symbol just reverses the truth value of whatever statement it precedes. Notice that the true and false values for P and Q are exactly the same for all tables except negation, since the negation has only one statement. That's because those columns express all possible combinations of truth values for any two statements. This is what is called a base table. The circled values are the truth values that result when the connective is applied. Each connective results in a unique set of truth values. Notice that for conjunctions, disjunctions, and conditionals, there is one unique row of truth values. This is an easy way to remember those tables. If you can remember the unique row, you can remember the rest of the table. So, if you remember that only the first row of the conjunction is true, you know all the other values under the conjunction are false. The unique row for the disjunction is the last row, in which both statements are false, resulting in the disjunction being false. And for the conditional, only row 2 is false. The biconditional is true only if both statements have the same truth value, true or false. The negation symbol just reverses the value of the original statement. Remember that the main characteristic of all deductive arguments is that if the premises are true and the logic is valid, the conclusion must be true. So this also means that if we have two true premises and a false conclusion, we know the argument must be invalid. This gives us a convenient way to test for the validity of an argument. If the premises are true and the conclusion is false, we know we've made a mistake in reasoning. In this example, I've symbolized the statements by using capital letters. The first premise is H or S for Tom is wearing a hat or Tom is wearing a scarf. The second premise is not S for Tom is not wearing a scarf. And the conclusion is H for Tom is wearing a hat. The capital letters are useful for keeping track of particular statements if that's our interest. But here I'm demonstrating characteristics that apply to all arguments that have the same logical form, no matter what statements are used. To express the general form of an argument, we use small letters for variables rather than capitals. A variable is just a symbol that stands for any statement. So by using variables, we are describing general patterns of all logical arguments using that same pattern or form, regardless of what statement we might plug into that form. By convention, the variables that are used in propositional logic start with P and go forward in the alphabet. So if we have two variables, we'd use P and Q. If we have three variables, we'd use P, Q, and R, and so on. In this argument, we only have two different statements, so we'll just use P and Q. Here's the statements expressed as variables and connectors and the resulting truth table that shows all the combinations of values for the argument. The base table on the left shows all possible truth values for any two statements, however they are connected. The first or major premise of the argument is the disjunction P or Q. We know that the only time a disjunction is false is when both statements are false, although their combinations result in a true inference. 
So rows one through three are true and only row four with two false statements is false. The second premise is symbolized by Q and the negation sign. Not Q has the opposite truth value of Q. So the values for not Q are false, true, false, true. Just the reverse of the values under Q in the base table. The conclusion is P. We just repeat the values under P from the base table. True, true, false, false. Now we have the truth table completed for this argument. But what does it tell us about the validity of this argument? We need to look for rows in which all the premises are true and there is a false conclusion. That can't happen in a valid argument, so if it does, we know the argument is invalid. There are only two rows in which the conclusion is false, rows 3 and 4. So we only need to check these two rows to see if the argument is valid. Rows 3 and 4 have a false conclusion, but in neither row are both premises true. In row 3, the first premise is true, but the second premise is false. Since there are no rows in the truth table for this argument, in which all premises are true and the conclusion is false, the argument has been proven valid. Just to quickly recap, our strategy for testing the validity of this argument was to look for a row in the truth table of the argument in which all premises are true and the conclusion is false. This is because valid deductive arguments require that if all the premises are true and it is valid, the conclusion must be true. So if the premises are true and the conclusion is false, we would have proof that it is invalid. This argument turns out to be proven valid because there are no rows that show that it is invalid. And since all deductive arguments must be either valid or invalid, we have proven it is valid. Thanks for watching.